Amanda. I bet. We're obviously a book and channel. Today we're watching Signs Gate Zero, season one, episode six. Uh, can I be honest with you? Sure. I think I'm enjoying this series way more than I thought I would at the start of it. I was a little bit anxious, you know, going into this after... I think we both were. Starting after finishing Steins Gate and it having a permanent place in my heart in mm-hmm. where it is and quality and content work. as a finished work exactly that I I was a bit nervous going into this but I'm enjoying it much more than I ever thought I would. Uh, I would agree with that. Uh, we we were kind of semi introduced to Kagari last episode mm-hmm. or Kana at the moment, um, and we got to see the reaction to Mayuri, you know, <laughs> at, at this time. I, I don't know. I have no idea where we're going now, man. I, I We have theories about how that might connect later on into, uh, you know, the AI that is Makise Kurisu right now. Mm-hmm. But other than that, I'm a little, I'm a little nervous. I'm also nervous. Some big things are happening. Uh, don't know where they're going with any of them. I don't know where. dangerous territory. Where does pain land in Steins Gate Zero? Because Steins Gate had like a very specific like definition pain? of pain and what it would do to me mm-hmm. and i wonder if steins gate zero is going to go down a similar route of making me cry feel pain or <laughs> you know what's it gonna lead to to make you incredibly happy maybe maybe ready yeah sweet oh. Oh. what's this gonna be like What happened between the start of this and the... Collapsed and unconscious. How do you explain to somebody who forgot their memory that they came from the future? I know, right? That's alarming. And seeing Mary, that person just now. Interesting. It's like those feelings are still there. They're just so deep down. wild it's so nice to see that contrast of her responding to this given name she has and how she has no feelings or emotion toward it and then the relief and the comfort she has by saying this name out loud for a world line that keeps maori alive man she's going through a lot of emotional distress still like while being alive Mm mm-hmm but isn't that life? I don't know. This is more specific. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> there is no God. Wonderful new world. Yep. Yes. Are we not saying Sheena on purpose? <laughs> Clever. And Mayuri's just gonna be Mayuri. Damn, for some reason, right? So we're still utilizing Moeka. Hmm. 
And we don't know how much we can trust Moika. <laughs> if Kagari is any ounce of, you know, Kurisu, what would Maho's reaction to her be? <laughs> Judy Reyes. Your love life. Hmm. This is such a different Okabe, you know? But it's like unsettling still. Why people are after her. Why'd she get amnesia? What has she been doing? Thinking then. <laughs> the I hear a voice, you know? And what she, uh, Suzaha was trying to do there. I wonder if Maho wanted help with like an outfit to go to the shrine. <laughs> Were they all changing? And so he was like yeah. protecting the door? Yeah, his daughter oh, was there. Yeah, of course. It's just being a good dad. <laughs> oh, no, he wanted to see her first. Ah. Look at the smiley face in the shoes. <laughs> We're not seeing his face. I don't know how I feel. I can never look at Mr. Braun the same way. God, that construction episode is amazing. It's kind of like a date. <laughs> You're making friends, Maho. Embrace it. I bet Suzuha's mom is actually. <sighs> Did just the camaraderie remind him of what it was like to really be in that? I mean, you could see like the lab coat. Where's Mayuri? Look at Suzuha! <laughs> Seeing them She's together! She's already dragging him around, it's perfect! <laughs> <laughs> God, I bet that hurt so bad because Suza has trained so well. <laughs> oh, I don't like that laugh. Oh, no. Poor Ruka. No. <laughs> yes. Mother and daughter. <laughs> oh. Mm. oh. That made me think of something I hadn't thought about for an episode or two. I yes! Reaction to Kagari! I wonder what that is to lead into, though, you know? Mm -hmm. Yes! It's 
It's like, look at that fun, but it's not really curry soup that's there. It's like a replacement. Look <laughs> how annoyed she looks. <laughs> Baruka! He needs <laughs> I believe it. It's his fault. I love the music that accompanies them. <laughs> I was about to say, who's that in the background? There's no point. <laughs> Weird vibes. Mm -hmm. Weird vibes! I told you there was a um, foreigner with the men! That's the foreigner. It's the hill I'll die on. Dara looked so sad. So did Suzuha. I'm glad Nei gets to be a part of this. Mm. Who's gonna run to the store? I'm nervous. Mm. I'm worried. Oh! Mm -hmm. He doesn't look very happy about it, though. I wonder if they're trying to get Maho, like, away, so Maho doesn't get wrapped up in it. No. She can recognize the lab? Oh! <gasps> Uh-oh. Uh-oh! Wait, why could she- うん。私は<笑> Neither of them are her. I can't, like, I'm on someone guard. I can't even relax right now. Weird. Music's weird. The second that Okabe was brought up. Can't connect to the server. Okabe, <gasps> <gasps> Okay, that was Steins Gate Zero, Season 1, Episode 6. It's really starting to feel like Steins Gate. <laughs> but, like really uncanny you know i, I think Valley. that i think that's a really good like term especially with ai in included oh yeah i think so i'd agree with that term usage there's that valley that i don't think is able to be crossed in terms of like my emotions in regards to the show and i think that's completely the intention in regards to makise karisu what amadeus really is and what the vibe of 
Steins Gate Zero mm. as a parallel world, like, as a world line that's separate, should feel like it's it's bizarre how they're able to encapsulate it. We're on um like six episodes in, and I had felt like um we had established some type of foundation that this Steins Gate Zero was going to stand on in terms of what direction the narrative was going and what from Steins Gate it was not going to be. Mm-hmm replicating or reusing or like tropes or ideas or themes or concepts Mm -hmm. that were separate that was steins gate that was when we were time traveling and sending text messages and switching world lines and this is a separate story separate situation we aren't doing the phone microwave things are different here so i was the the fact that we had the call back to mayuri's watch at the end i don't know how i didn't like I mean, I get how I didn't even uh, guess as Okabe was having little flashes throughout the whole episode. It was ramping up to something that should have told us that we are going to see something happen that is reminiscent, if not a replication of something that happens in Steins Gate. I guess I just thought it was more like while it was happening through the episode. We were maybe more more of of the emotional side. And internal, Mm -hmm. right? That's the where I was. Rather than it being such a quick embodiment of a physical manifestation of what it was like in the previous story. And how we ended off in terms of like how we could have capped that emotion and kind of ended the episode off of like trying to identify why we got those flashes and what it means for Okabe. We ended on a good cap note that we didn't, that obviously that's why I'm so surprised by the ending there. Uh, with Maho walking up to him and being like, I'm so sorry I brought the phone out right now. And him being like, it's okay. And he's looking fondly at this group of people and this embodiment of Kurisu. And he's like, I need to move on. And it's like this this moment that all of those flashes we got throughout the episode, you know, finally that line kind of felt like we're capping the emotion. We're, we're ending this episode off with Okabe in a certain frame of mind that's a little bit different than where we started the episode off Uh, and might be closer to a point of um, happiness and uh, internal rebuilding Mm -hmm. of his like psyche (laughs) and healing. And of course, you know, my stupid brain wasn't like, oh yeah, this healing, this means something bad's going to happen, which should have, because I mean... Come on, this this show in Steins Gate has done some... He's not scared of emotionally hurting us. So, like, a lot of this episode was quite a bit of fun, right? Mm-hmm. And quite... And a, callbacks. Well, and callbacks and, like, a new normalcy a little a bit. new normalcy, yeah. So, it, in what I had come to expect in Steins Gate, whenever we'd have an episode that was majority of, like, a slice of life or at least, like, a day in adventure... It was very different here because of all the new, like, figures, right? All the new characters that we've been introduced to and their balancing of them with the characters that we already are very well acquainted with. And a lot of it was fun, but because of my, my, you know, uh, being exposed to Steins Gate and what that is like and how the storytelling is... Whereas in the first Steins Gate, I think that at this point, I was just enjoying myself completely until I was dumbfounded and shocked by something happening like at the end of this episode. But during this episode, it was like, all right, but what's going to happen, mm-hmm. right? Like, like what what's going to be the, the step too far or the step that triggers something mm-hmm. to go down that road because of how much of the episode was so calm and enjoyable without any like and real issues occurring. Healing. Yeah. And and just like healthy, you know, rebuilding, re- seeing having Okabe see that the distance that he has created from these groups of pe- from these people that he cares about, his, the other lab members, uh that he might in fact want to close that distance once again. He might feel ready to close that distance and come back to the lab more often and be with these people more often, live again and and be with his friends. I think that the moment at the end, in the end sequence, the last like two minutes, 
I think that I find the most interesting. So I want to wait a bit to get there because I agree. Like that's what I, I think that that offers the most content to be talked about at least. Um, But in terms of the early, or I'd say the first 75% of the episode, like it, it brought me back to very specific moments in the original Steins Gate. One of them being when Suzaha was on the roof talking to Okabe about not being able to ever dream of a world with these friends and interactions with them and how that mirrors or, or even connects to Okabe looking at these people having fun and in a flash of a second, we're, we're seeing Okabe back into his lab coat and what his version of those interactions were. And I want to know, like, What's your interpretation of Okabe's feelings there? Do, do, does he is he in a place mentally where there there's a possibility to grow going forward and s- recognize this interaction as what it is and understanding that he's on the outside of it? Is there a desire and like motive to go forward and like rejoin in that full of a sense? To, to, to that fun or has he already made choices or is he already existing in a world line w- where he will be permanently ostracized or m- like like in a place where he'll never be able to find a level of contentness well, like i think that you that the end of this episode is what answers that question for before us the end, but before though. that yeah i think that I wasn't thinking any any deep thoughts necessarily mm-hmm. in terms of what potential for a future Okabe was going to have because we know where this future ends. We know that at some point Daru and Okabe are leading this re- resistance, this terrorist group, you know, inventing a time machine and that Suzuha and Kagari came back you know, here to to get Okabe to go back again and save Kurisu. And I, I think that because I know what the future holds, I never really thought more about what that meant in terms of like Okabe's interpersonal relationships and what type of friendships and closeness he would have with these people in that future. Yeah, like I like we know where he ends up to to the degree of feeling like there needs to be that there there is something more to do, mm-hmm. right? But we get and, that's an action. That's not how close. Well, it, that's what I'm trying to say is that like I never really thought deeper. Like we know what actions he chooses to do or has chosen to do or what he chooses to do in this future, but that doesn't have anything to do with how close he opens his heart to the people around him. I agree and I disagree there. So the point that I'm trying to bring up and make is that I think that uh, you're right in the actions that we know, but I think that we can at least partially assume where his emotions are that lead him to that, right? Um, to, to lead him to such a steadfast decision mm-hmm. and and complicated decision that he makes. But I don't think that that at all takes away or should take away our understanding of how he gets there. Mm-hmm. I think that it's really important for us to try to understand, like to to almost compartmentalize and ignore that we know that he ends up in the place that he does. It's important to well, acknowledge it and talk it. And yeah. I feel like from watching Steinsgate and knowing that this Okabe is the exact same Okabe from Steinsgate because he retained his memories across the world lines, that I feel like I know e- exactly how easy it would be for him to come to a decision where he feels like something must be done for him to emotionally put himself in the place where he's like, yep, I'm going to go back at it. I'm going to go back into like being, you know, risking that miserable feeling, maybe having to re-see Mayuri's death over and over again. And I'm going to make it work and I'm going to save everyone because we've seen him do it. We've seen him like fall and get then get back up again. Yeah. And we know how he feels about these people and for them to be at risk again for in a world line where he already had to sacrifice Kurisu for. 
Well, b b before the risk, there's no risk before the ending sequence here for, right. for a good bit I'm of it, saying, right? I'm just saying, but I can easily understand how he could come to those emotions quicker sure, and but easier again, because of what I've seen in Trying to shelf what he's going to come to. I think that in-, in Like if nothing happened later on and we literally like- if, if we didn't know what happens later on, what are what would feel you think that he would be doing or feeling of of what of where his level of hope and optimism are in terms for his future barring again the ending sequence of this episode like if we're if we're talking about our first interpretation of how he's seeing these new group of friends right mm -hmm. and like there's new addition to it is he like, with all the work that he's done suggested by, by Maori about trying to use, like, dare I say, like, th therapeutic mm -hmm. methods, right, to try to continue to move forward. It's been years, right? It, is there... Is, is there hope there? Or is it, like, just devastation of remembering, of like, oh, I remember what it was like. Because, like, you I can... I think there's hope there. Yeah, so, like, in seeing get, that... And that's what makes what happens next harder yeah. to deal with because we see him get to a point where you could see this character. If nothing happens at the end of the episode here, we could see this character of Okabe deciding to maybe live again a little bit after this. I agree that there's hope there. I think the thing that solidified that hope for me is what he said to Maho mm -hmm. about what Amadeus is, should be, and what they should be doing with that in line with Kagari, but that's the part that's super interesting, but also torturous to me when you take into possibilities of things going wrong again, because like we've seen him go through so much and continue to go through it in hopes that things will get better. And we've seen him falter there, but this is very different. This is on a completely other end of the spectrum because it's not like he's currently going through it. He's like, detached a bit in terms of time from what happened and now he's trying to move forward with that the only reason um the only reason we're having any emotional uh growth or healthy thought from him or any ounce of trying to unpack how he feels is because he's in a secure space because he's in the world line where CERN's not going to come after them he is not focused on trying to save the world or save Mayuri. Curry Sue already made her sacrifice. This is the world line that he fought to get to. He's He probably feels a sense of security. Like I feel like people don't unpack their trauma or start to deal with it or start to try to heal from it until they feel like they are in a space where they can start to do so, where they feel that they're not going to constantly be in like fight or flight. But to a certain extent, it wasn't even dealing with it for a lot of it. It was removal of the situ of like the but that's just environment. Like a natural, for him. That's a natural, immediate response to but it. It's that's sad. Like denial, isolation. Because like I it it I could be way off base here, but it's like the happiness that he was experiencing in that environment, I think, is probably greater than anything he's experienced since going about his new life in terms of my understanding. And because of that, it almost makes me feel like, I, I wonder if he like doesn't think it all, like there's no possibility he could ever get a normalcy back with that group of people because of his decision to go in an opposite direction because of how traumatic it was. I don't know if he would feel that when he's seeing how easy it is to now, have it. But like at the start of Steins Gate Zero, like after the time skip. Well, that's because he chose not to. Yeah. He wasn't, and, but that was for his own um, trying to process his own trauma. Like that was his trauma response. That was his dealing with grief. Like yeah. he was grieving. He was going through the process. There are different steps to it. There are different emotions at each step. And he was going through that. And it's perfectly, I would say, normal in his response to want, not want to be around the lab anymore, kind of isolate himself from his friend group. I agree and that it's normal. Yeah. In the process of healing from, from grief, eventually you start, you know, getting your life back, getting that normalcy back hopefully it's very soon and you don't have to go through the grieving process 
for for too long, but they're it seems like they might be getting him I don't know. I feel like everyone probably goes through the emotions in like a different uh order possibly, but definitely we've seen him do a lot of a lot of different emotions, a lot of different reactions to how he feels. And, but all I can think to experience if you're in this moment of about to open yourself up again to accepting, you know, this is going to be your new normal. Yeah. And you know these people and they care about you and you're about to willingly step into that life again and almost step out of your room uh, to the people that have been waiting for you. I, I feel like the response would be anger. I think it's that's a good segue, though, because like regard like where he is now. Right. He is at a party. He is doing he he's doing the things that he is. And, and there was like no a, grumbling about doing this with, you know, what does that do to the psyche when it's met with this shit? Uh-huh. Right. Like, uh, so Anger. in in regards to talking about it. And the end of the episode, I think that. I wanted to preface it before I forget that. Obviously, the memories of Daru and Mayori, uh, like, the entire group in regards to Makise Kurisu are different. Mm -hmm. And even benching the idea of, oh, I've had dreams of different world lines, you know, like, it is so fucking traumatic for me as an audience member to even, like... To see, to to witness this, even though those characters, it's like I'm I'm feeling for them almost. I think we're like, given Kagari and the Kagari amnesia explanation mm-hmm. and feelings at the beginning of the episode to give us an idea Preamble. of how Daru and Mayuri might feel upon seeing AI Kurisu or hearing the name. Yeah. That there's this sense of nostalgia. All of the memories and and who that really is are not easily obtainable, maybe, in, because they're in an awake state and not sleeping. Um, but there's a nostalgia there, just like Sheena Kagari's name is nostalgic to her. Mayuri's face is nostalgic to her. It seems like the parallel is the watch stopping to Amadeus shutting down. I don't know if the line that Amadeus said about bringing up is Okabe there, if that is synonymous with Maori, like explaining that, oh, I just wound it. My watch is, I don't know if that's going to be a thing, mm-hmm. but uh, hell, I, re- I would assume that this isn't going to be nothing like it was before in terms of this happening again and again. Well, we because have we don't no have the capability same ability. to yeah. do that. Um, the, when um, earlier I said that there was one point that like is especially interesting to me for this ending is that Maho doesn't lose access to connection on her phone in general. She loses connection Amadeus. to the Amadeus server, which I would think if we're going to especially think that Professor Reyes has anything to do with this, that the choice to make sure that Amadeus can't witness this, if you have this AI that you want to be able to utilize, you want to control what memories or what information is input into that that server, that database. You don't want to have Amadeus see what's about to possibly happen to Okabe or Maho. What if Amadeus does? You know, like how the idea of Okabe's phone still being on like, what if Okabe, like, but accepted this and, like, Amadeus was aware of what happened? Well, that's the thing. Did they, how, did they just break the connection with Maho's phone? Like, there's no way they'd, perp- they just break the connection with Maho's mm. phone, but not with Okabe's phone. Yeah. It's, it has to just be, like, they shut down Amadeus for a little bit to, like, ensure. Because, I mean, would you really want something that you're possibly trying to use as a pawn, which is Makise Kurisu, yeah. to have access to information or feelings or thought okay. or scene that would make her not want to work with you anymore? So I have a couple of questions. Who is the person that is the reason for the guns here? Is it Kagari? I think so. Okay. If it's Kagari, Why? What, okay, what is Kagari or what has Kagari done before they lost their memory that mm-hmm. is is causing this to happen? Right. I mean, think about it. If Who would know who Kagari is if Kagari hasn't even been uh, born yet? Like, she is a child in the future that Mayuri, you know, takes in. 
it either needs to be that the someone laid eyes on Kagari and Kagari's either currently, if Kagari is some type of clone or body or concept at the moment, uh, it needs to be seen by whoever is uh, trying to create Kagari in the moment. But either they, has already started or has just come up with the concept. Because other than that, you'd have to have someone come back to the future for them to be like, hey, Kagari escaped. She's here now. we got to go find her. Before you get to your other, like, if of that, too, like, to branch off of that, they'd also either have to be incredibly diligent and trustworthy of their intuition or have knowledge of time travel. Like, right, exactly. Be- we either needed to have someone come back and identify that Kagari was missing from the future. Like, it... Like, if, if like, hypothetically, if Judy Reyes has uh, 75% Kagari being built right now as, like, a clone, then it would be, oh, shit, that looks just like the Kagari I'm building. That's what that I, means yeah, exactly. they have to come from the future. Like, right. there's that bridge there, that would need to no be crossed. There's no way there'd be another... I mean, with the whole... Both Maho... Having Maho and Okabe literally talk about it two times in this episode that that's not Curry Sue. That's not Curry Sue. You know, both of them, uh, we have Maho reacting to seeing her. She looks so similar, but it's not her. What are the odds, you know, especially if we are thinking like that if, what if that Kagari is currently being created or cloned from Curry Sue or some body is being used to input the memories from Amadeus what do you think – so do you think that it's more plausible that before Kagari lost their memories, they did something that put them on, on this the radar? Map. Yeah. Uh, I kind of like the idea that they've always been looking, but they had no inkling of where to look. And then once Moeka got the connection to Okabe and Daru looking for Kagari and then learned that Kagari found them on her own – you know, I feel like I'm. I feel like they were looking for Kagari this whole time, had no idea where to find her. Moeka doesn't find her; she finds a picture. So, what would be the reason for them looking for Kagari in your mind then? Because, because they have to either know what she is or who she is or something from the future. But I don't think it's something that she's done while she's been here in the past. That is why they're trying to find. Her. I think it is. I think it is. So do you think this voice in her head that she went off to try to understand that voice and therefore found, got into something? I think that the idea, I think that the voice told her something to not, uh, 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 within the idea of not changing the future, you shouldn't change the future. I think that could be Amadeus or it could be something that we don't know yet. And I think that, because of the voice, after this interaction with Suzaha where she pulled the gun on her, she went to try to do something to further uh, benefit the side of not changing the future, which then, so then led how would them. they let her get away and her get amnesia? Did she decide to run away because she realized she didn't want to partner with them What anymore? gave her amnesia? What gave her amnesia? That's where, like, uh, like, is it some type of link with Amadeus that gave her amnesia? Is it just, like, I got amnesia, you know, like, I, I don't know. There's a lot of questions, obviously, yeah. revolving around Kagari. Uh, I do want to say that, um, really quick, uh, the difference between Suzaha and Kagari both interacting with their mothers this episode the difference is so painful yeah not like obviously for kagari kagari doesn't have any memory that this is and mayuri doesn't know either but they still feel comfortable together and there's this like really lovely thing happening but then i remind myself suzaha's mom is dead in the future mayuri's not dead from what Kagari last saw from the future but Suza had watched her mom die and is now interacting with that same mom but as a younger person and there's this distance created but is that distance really because I don't want to interact too much with my mom because she's my mom or is that like a barrier put up because like oh my god 
my mom's dead in the future. Well, I, I think, don't want to get too close. I think here. it would be more, I don't want to interact with my mom, not because she's my mom, but because they haven't gotten together with Daru yet. Suzaha's existence is still on the table, whether it's going to happen or not. That's fair, too. Yeah. It could be that. But I just wanted to bring up the possibility yeah. that there's also an emotional barrier. That's fair. And I a think fear to, like, get too close to her because it'll hurt more. The parallels were definitely very apparent this episode, mm-hmm. especially. <sighs> Next episode is going to be... um fun time i don't know can i make a guess sure i have no clue moek is gonna come in and save them that'd be wild i don't i have no evidence to support my theory other than that'd be fucking like a crazy twist to the entire situation of moeka coming in to be the person that causes suzaha to try to buy okabe time if moeka was the one to come in that'd be fucking crazy okay. dude. i have a few ideas too to put on the table uh, Suzuha's mom mimics the exact way she dies in the mm. future. But now, that'd be fucked. Or she comes in to save the day in her own right. Maybe that's how Suzuha learned her techniques. Maybe, but I could see a replication of what is going to be happening in the future with gunfire with uh, Suzuha's mom. Um, another thing to bring up is like, Mr. Braun, Ney is there still. Yeah. Oh yeah, Mr. true. Mr. Braun's Braun. probably having like a panic. Like he saw the guy. They yeah. nodded at each other. Mr. He's, Braun and Moeka could come in. He's aware of what's ha- about to happen here. Yeah, you're right. He's aware that his daughter, like he has to cross his fingers and just like, I know his life is on the line. Like he has this pact to kill himself if he doesn't do his job properly. Um, but his and, daughter is. But it? his daughter's there. And I'm kind of surprised that they didn't let Mr. Braun just go up and get his daughter out for it. Like, oh, I'm here to pick up Nay. Okay, bye. Like, I know that could have been, like, weird or suspicious well, it's different through the timing. But, like. Organizations, too, right? Is assume. it? I guess. But they're in the same masks and stuff. Mm, they're the, different. Are they, all the masks are a little different. Maybe there's just this, like, maybe that's just. How people criminals are but it's also a different just time masks. just the masks like the quality yeah, of masks has changed the, the ver- it's late it's more in the future than last time so they just yeah. were able to different have trends, access to you know? more quality masks mm-hmm. yeah I, I mean but the idea that moeka could come in here and do something positive to this situation awesome or mr braun too both of them would make my heart happy just mm-hmm. because something redeeming from either of those two for like this great idea of what their lives could be or should be like you know Mm -hmm. where they're not subjected to uh hurt and then therefore becoming criminals and pawns dying (sighs) all right that's all of you thank you guys so much for watching this video please like comment and subscribe and we hope to see you next time